We are now joined by somebody who is a friend of the show as we've ever had since we started 365 Sports and even before then, Phil Bennett, interim head coach at North Texas. There is at least smoke in the air that this could be it for you. <laughs> you know, I, I told you, Dave, I had, I've had a great time this year. It's just uh, I've got to go home. I've got to talk to Julie. And uh, as I said, I, I, I've got to heed to her advice. And, uh, you know, I'm 67 years old. I've had an unbelievable career. And it's just time to evaluate some things. Are you embarrassed by some of the attention you're getting because of people? I mean, I know you. you you're, you're always full throttle. But, I mean, I bet your phone started blowing up. <laughs> yeah. You know, it did. It did. And it's just, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, it's been such a journey. And I'm so thankful, as I said today. And, uh, and just there comes a time that, that, you know, a couple of things. You're, you're not that I don't have the energy or, you know, I'm very thankful. I'm very healthy. Uh, it's just, you know, there comes a time that things slow down a little bit for you. And uh, I'm very thankful for my time here and everywhere I've been. And uh, I'm just getting to the point that maybe, you know, a couple of things. You know, I, I, I saw the last couple of years what R.C. went through with the cancer scare. And then, then, then Mike, you know, passing on, you know, that quick. I mean, it affects you. And it changed your thinking. You know, you, know, uh, you, know, you, you just don't know how much time you've got left. And you, you want to be with the ones that are important to you. I don't know. I can't say. My wife said she's going to have a man sleeping in the house next year, and if it's going to be me, I better show up. I'm an Aggie, but I'm not stupid. That that is you such know, a that's I, such a Phil Bennett quote of maybe all timer right there. Well, you, you know, and and we built that place when uh, years ago, and she told me go do your thing, but there's going to be a point that that I want you back. <laughs> And, and I had a couple of years there when I was with you doing your show and enjoyed it. And, um, you know, just so many times, it just, uh, I, I thought, she told me, she goes, well, is this it? Is this it? So, uh, yeah, just, and they asked me the question and sort of, I, I, it's a true answer, you know, and, and she did. She said, it's not. So we'll evaluate from there. Phil, you've been an interim coach before. Paul brought this up when you were at Pittsburgh with Wanstead, and then you took over. So did you learn anything from that experience that you've used or tweaked this week or last week or the last couple of weeks? Yeah. You know, uh, both times I replaced two unbelievable people and unbelievable coaches, Dave Wanstead and Seth Luttrell. And, and both times – now, this is crazy – we we is we won the Big East. We we tied uh, Cincinnati for the Big East championship, and and there was a conflict with him and our athletic director. And then this situation, we played in the championship game against UTSA. This, and you know the thing, I guess the biggest thing that I learned, they that it's about the players, not about me, not about the coaches. It's about the players, and, and I wanted to, I wanted them to to to, to know that that it's a player's game and they're important to us. Uh, I got with the senior leadership and just talked about, hey, this is the way I'd like to do it. I want your input. And, um, and it's, you know, to this point, they have been outstanding. We've lost nobody to the portal. Mm. And, you know, I said, let's, let's unite and try to finish this season on a really good note for you guys. Not for us, but for you guys. And um, I think we have a chance to do that. Phil, doesn't that say a lot about you? Not just the kids, the young men who are rallying around all of this, maybe even a lot about what it says about what they loved about Seth Luttrell. There's, this is part of the business, but what does that say about Phil Bennett? You know, I'm not real big. <laughs> I've always felt that, that I, I, I tried to be a person of integrity. You know, uh, sometimes I probably uh, truthful beyond the point what I know to be the truth. Uh, and, and I just know this. I know that, that coaching is a blessing. And, and to be able to do the things I've done over the last 44, 45 years, uh, what my coaches have meant to me, I've never had a bad job, Smoke, not one. Uh, I've had some frustrating situations, 
I've never worked with a bad group of people. Uh, you know, I hear horror stories. Some coaches say, man, this was a terrible job. I've never been around that, ever. I have worked with Hall of Fame coaches. You know, uh, my position coach was R.C. Slocum, Hall of Fame. You know, best of the best. Emory Ballard, I, I can go on and on. Um, Bill Snyder might be the best story in the history of college football. Mm -hmm. You know, I was with Fred Akers. I mean, I mean, I just, I'm just very thankful for the, for the guys that have, have impacted me and given me the opportunity. I had a guy that gave me my first coordinator job at 28 and Jim Kreiner, who happened to be Boise State's first head coach. Mm. So, um, it, it's it's a crazy ride, but it's been such a blessing. We'll get to Boise State, and obviously tomorrow night in Frisco in the bowl game, which is a great way to go out and a, a nice year for North, North Texas. How did Mike Leach, uh, you mentioned that, impact you a little bit, even more so this last these last seven days or so? And do you have, among the million, a favorite Mike Leach story? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, Mike... Uh, I met him uh, when he was at Iowa, the Iowa Westland with Al. Uh, I've known Hal Mummy forever. And, and uh, you know, it, and I don't even know how you say it, but Mike has always been somewhat of a quirky guy, and, and but a good quirky. And uh, obviously when I was at, at uh, we, we, when he got the tech job, uh, we played him. I was the defensive coordinator at, at uh, K-State. And he had Cliff Kingsbury. And, and they had some really good receivers, and he was throwing that ball downfield. Well, I had a secondary full of, you know, first and second round picks or high draft picks, great players. And, and and he wasn't able to throw the ball. And he told me, I'll never forget this after the game, he goes, you know, you can only do that stuff with the players that you have. And I looked at him, I said, I know that, Mike. And a couple of years later, here I am, the head coach at SMU. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do I couldn't do those things. We play a game in Ford Stadium, and he, he had played me. I, I guess uh, we'd played two years, and this was the third year, and we'd gotten a little bit better. And it was a great game, and and it came down to we were trying to score inside the five. I think it was a three or four point game. And we thought we'd scored at the end of the game on third down. We didn't. We went for it on fourth. Game's over. I think there was a minute and six seconds. And I said, put the twos in. Well, I look up, and Sonny Cumbie was his quarterback. He's got his starters in. And on the first play, on about the four-yard line, three-yard line, he's, he's going vertical. And I had to get my brother, Jerry, who you know well, mm -hmm. off – because he was raising hell. You know, the game was over. And anyway, they did it again. Lo and behold, a fight breaks out after the game. They didn't score, but it was a – and I and, it, and Mike and I, I didn't get the same uh, – because Tommy McBay, who was his ops guy, who was also passed, it, it, I'd been dear friends with. And I sort of – I was mad, but not too mad. I get up in my office and phone rings. And Tommy McVeigh, he said, Phil, he said, uh, Mike wants to come up and talk to you. So there's just up the stairs from their locker room. I said, tell him to come up. And he came up and he, and he was like a little kid that had maybe, you know, uh, had done something. And he, he walked in, he had his head, he goes, you mad? I said, well, why you, why you do that? He goes, I, I wasn't thinking, you know, and he was very humble. And, and I said, I'm not mad. And, and you couldn't stay mad at him. Uh, and, and, you know, he just gets so involved in the game. And uh, and, and he said, your little, your, your little brother, which I said, that's my older brother. He goes, he's crazy, isn't he? <laughs> I said, yeah, he is. I remember when we left Baylor, he was at Washington State. And he called me and he says, hey, I want to hire Kaz Gazzotti. And I said, I don't know if Cos will ever go up there. And he goes, oh, he goes, you can help me. But uh, you're just a good guy, fun guy to talk to. And uh, just, uh, he put things in perspective. And, and, and you know, just 51 is too young. You know, he's, he's impacted too many people, too many players. 
too many coaches. It's just been a – I think everybody has been uh, just a little bit, uh, you know, set back by this. Phil, well, you mentioned those matchups when you were at SMU with Texas Tech, and I know that Seth Luttrell is somebody that you knew uh, incredibly well as a player when you were coaching and then as joining his staff, and that's why you did because of him. He moves on. Uh, North Texas announced Eric Morris, who I think was at Tech when you were at SMU. Um, I recruited Eric. Okay. I was, in sh- I was in shallow water watching him play basketball, hoping Mike Leach didn't offer him a scholarship. And we did, but, uh, but Mike went to watch Mike also, this is another story. Mike said, Oh, I went and watched him play basketball. And I knew he could play for us. <laughs> mm, and there you so, were watching basketball as well. How this is part of the business. You've been fired. You've seen others fired who you coached for. It's, it's just so it's just the way it is. How, how do you handle that? You have an incoming group. You've been there before when Jim Grobe and then, of course, Rule came in at Baylor. How do you – How is it awkward? You know, it's not to me. I, I'm not going to change. I, you, know, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Eric. I told him – he said, I don't want to make anything uncomfortable. And I laughed. And I said, hell, you, nothing you can do is going to make me uncomfortable. We're on a schedule. We're going to go with that schedule. And, and this is fixing to be your team. Um, you know, I, I tell my, my son and my son-in-law, when you get into college sports or foot pro sports, you can't run scared. It's something that can happen. It's unbelievable. Uh, I go back to the story that, that I listened to one time with, with uh, Coach Bryant. He said his wife, Mary Harmon, they're coming back from Baylor and He's, Baylor beat him bad when he was at A&M. And he says, uh, uh, Paul, why we do this? And he said he was, he was like in a 56 or 57 Cadillac. I actually heard the story. He said, he said, you know, Mary Harmon, this, it, it's like, you know, making love to your wife. He said, when it's good, it's real good. When it's bad, it's still good. <laughs> and and, and that, that's what college football is. It, it, even when it's bad, it's good. Can you give me thoughts about your team as you focus? Boise State's gotten hot. They had a little bit of a rugged start. You're playing them tomorrow night right in your backyard. Just just how preparations have gone, X's and O's wise, scheme wise, preparation wise. You know, Dirk Cutter became the coordinator after game number four. Uh, simplified the offense. They put another quarterback in. Uh, and it's crazy. Uh, smoke, you know, they have a lot of uh, uh, Texas kids on their roster. Uh, they run the ball well. They set things up with the run, play action pass. Their quarterback is, is active. Uh, defensively, they squeeze the box. They're physically tough. Uh, you've got to get them off of you by throwing the ball. you got to get the ball downfield a little bit. Uh, and they have gotten better and better. And much like us, they uh, – they didn't play the championship game to the level that they wanted to. So they've got a lot to prove also. Randy Clements joining Mac Brown staff. A great addition for Mac. I mean, great addition. Uh, you know, uh, Chip Lindsay, who was with me at, the, at Arizona State, is also going to be on that staff. And what's crazy, we tried to hire Randy and Clem, uh, oh, excuse me, Randy and Chip at Arizona State. Uh, at that time, and Chip ended up going to Auburn and, and uh, Arizona State because it was one Baylor coach wouldn't let the other one come. They didn't want to go that far. I got to ask you this because you've been incredibly opinionated at it, at, like you are with anything, no matter what it is. Just you know, you kind of have that ability, like Mike Leach, to talk about everything. You've talked about this, the transfer portal. Here, you're trying to keep guys in the program just to get to a bowl game. Uh, it's 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 like even Mac Rhodes said earlier this week, and others. It's like chaos with everything going on. NIL transfer portal. It's not going to go anywhere. Maybe eventually there'll be a little bit more structure. Do you feel like with what's going on today? it might run some coaches out of college football? I'm not sure it will run them out, but it's things sure going to change them. Uh, you know, the, the way you you used to do business, you know, through high school recruiting, that's what I think suffering the most. Uh, people are ne- neglecting, evaluating. Uh, I, I know it's killing high school coaches because they're sitting there thinking, you know, nobody's come to – not as many guys are recruiting our players – 
because the first thing people look at because they're on, under pressure is saying, hey, I can go get a kid out of Nebraska if you're North Texas. Or I can go here. I can go there. And the people that are getting neglected on a whole is, is, is the high school student athlete. So when you mentioned the word structure, uh, they've got to change it. They've got to change it where where it gets back to some reasoning where you can balance this thing out. Dave Arand is looking for a defensive coordinator. Uh, if he, you have he, he, he himself. No, well, he's he's pretty, he's pretty good, and he's taken over that role until whenever he decides. Have you heard any scuttlebutt on that? You know, I haven't. I haven't. I laugh, though. I, I, I'm going to call him and tell him, you know, the last time, probably maybe the last time he played a true option team, he was calling <laughs> me at 1 o'clock in the morning in Pittsburgh when he was in Hawaii. He was fixing to play Navy, and we had played Navy. That's how Dave and I uh, uh, got to know each other. And I knew he was a special coach then because he was he was in tune with, with the details. Matt Rule at Nebraska, you think that works? You know, I think Matt's a, uh, obviously a, a very good coach. And I think he can bring a lot of things to the table that probably haven't been there since Frank Solich left. Uh, so, yes, I think – now, it's going to take – nowadays, you can flip it if he gets the right portal deal, right situation. Who knows? But, but yes, I think I think he will win there. National Signing Day is next week. Can we get you now verbally to commit to doing our segments again next year? You know what? Uh, there's a chance we can negotiate that. <laughs> I, like Republic, I like those Republic Steakhouses certificates you gave me i mean the price was right okay well i'm then. not a hard sale smoke especially you know when i when, when you know i don't have the pressure on me no i know i i know but i will be in touch with your agent who is who you are going to be with again what do you want to be uh, remembered as i i <laughs> you know number one you always uh, it, it's like with your children uh, i want to be remembered as being a guy that that uh cared deeply about his players. You know, I'm a rather intense guy. Sometimes uh, uh, kids, I've had so many kids tell me years later, hey, I get you now. And, and, and you know, I have this saying that as a coach in today's world, a lot of times, just like being a parent, you've got to save these, these young people from themselves and, and help develop their mind and, and you know, to, to being givers and not takers. Uh, I want to be the. I want to be a guy that 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 was respected by his peers. That hey, you know, his kids played hard. They were sound, um, and, and they were a team that 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 was hard. You know, it was hard to to get over on. Uh, and, and you know, I just want them. I want them to know that uh, that it wasn't all for naught. That 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 I did it. I never did it for money. Never did it. Uh, it was never about me. Uh, I did it because I love the game of football. I think the game of football is, is is so entwined with the game of life. You know, delayed gratification, uh, sacrifice together, you know, uniting for a cause. You know, our country is so divided right now. And if we ever just sit down and realize that it takes everybody, every, every uh, political party, every race, creed, color, that, hey, you know what? We're all human and, and just work together. Being able to work together, it can cure so many problems and don't care who gets the credit. You know, and, and uh, I think football teaches our young people that, that when they leave, they say, you know what? For me to be successful, be a good husband, a good father, a good worker, I've been trained to do these things. And, you know, and, and having God in your life, I mean, we've got to have we got to have someone that that we all know that the end, you know, it doesn't matter if you're if you're not right with with the Lord. And, and the older I get, the older, you know, more I realize that. Phil, you've been out of coaching very rarely in all those years since you started working for your alma mater that you mentioned earlier. What would you miss the most? Is it the whistle? Is it the camaraderie? Is it the locker room? Is it the prep? Is it game day? What will you miss the most? You know, you know, I think it's all the above. 
you know, just uh, but but the relationship. I mean, uh, uh, I had a situation today. One of one of our players came up to me, and this is a guy that's been sort of hit and miss, and never really, and I really never knew where I would really rate with him. And uh, he just told me, he said, "Coach, I appreciate you mm. more than you'll ever know." He said, "You never lied to me," and, and and it sort of hit me, and I thought, you know. I didn't always tell him what he wanted to hear, but, uh, and, and you know, I'll, I'm going to miss all of it. And, uh, I like the strategy. I like being with those guys. The locker room is fun. Uh, the stuff on the field, going through the battle. We, you know, we laughed the other day about game time. You know, everybody's crazy. You know, you've been on the sideline. People who've never been on the sideline smoke, they go crazy when they come up. They say, God, oh, man, I know. Yeah. You do that. It's a different animal. You have always been, as you said, someone who said exactly how you felt. And the fact that your former uh, current player said you never lied to him, that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Phil, uh, I can't wait to to possibly work that contract with you uh, for next football season or even before that. I love you, man. I really do. I consider you a great friend. And good luck against Boise State. Well, we're going to need it. And I think think it could be a really good game, and we're counting on it. And I want to – Thank you and all the, the, the guys down at uh, Sikkim Sports. I, I've always appreciated you. I had a, a great run and um, very thankful, and I look forward to that. Phil Bennett, interim head football coach at North Texas on 365 Sports. The Big Finish sales event is